Thank you. Yes, so All right, well, but real briefly, but brief, brief, like real briefly. Okay. Uh, happy Friday. I want to thank you all for coming out. Um, this is, uh, people are always talk about how big my district is, and oh boy, it must be so tough. And I always say, yeah, the only people, the only people who are, I think he's filming this, Matt. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's all right. Sorry. The only people uh, that have a bigger district than mine run statewide. And so uh, while a lot of people feel sorry for me, I have only a third of what our treasurer has. Uh, I first got to know Dan uh, back in 96 when I first became a chairman in St. Clair. And Dan was always very helpful, always very encouraging. And he was somebody that I would call back in 98, 2000, 2002. Uh, he'd want to know who in St. Clair County who in Southwest Illinois was, could use some help. Uh, he was very helpful for Steve Reed when Steve Reed ran for races. Uh, and we could always count on Dan to help, uh, help people who were running for office in this area. It's been wonderful to watch uh, him rise up the ranks and I know that uh, his star is still uh, on the way up. Uh, he's doing a great job as a treasurer. He's also doing a great job as the chairman for Mitt Romney in Illinois. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things I'm telling people, and I want you to go forth and spread this message, Mitt Romney can win Illinois. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, and where he wins Illinois is in this area, through our hard work running up the score for Mitt Romney. If you get everybody you can to the polls, and keep working, keep working. Start early. People that you know, uh, ask them out to lunch. Say, oh, ladies, let's get together. Let's go out and have lunch. When you're there, you can plan. We'll go vote after we have lunch. You can get them voted. You can talk about all the candidates and why they should vote. I don't think you're going to have a hard time selling Mitt Romney. Uh, but if we win, if, if Romney wins Illinois, uh -oh. that changes tremendously the entire dynamics in Illinois. We're able to, if people will look at this like they looked at Al Gore losing Tennessee to George Bush. It's over for them. And it'll be seen as over for the Chicago style machine politics, the corruption that's dominated this state. People will look at this and say, Illinoisans are ready for a change. Uh, and uh, I'm very honored that uh, as his district is so much larger than mine, and he's got a lot of other things he's trying to do, but he wanted to come through here and see us, uh, and also show his support for my candidacy for judge. Uh, he's a friend, and I appreciate very much his effort, so with that, uh, your state treasurer, Dan Rutherford. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thanks for being out here. Um, uh, for Steve, he's he, Steve's been a. I got to do one thing. I'm going to move this balloon. Yeah. Also, <laughs> I can see the blue balloon in your head, Steve. The rest of you doesn't fit the blue balloon quite right. So I really, uh, you know, I appreciate you stepping up. This is not easy. This is not easy putting your name on the ballot. And you know, we'll talk about the presidential race in a moment. But running for judge to be an appellate court. It's not easy. Number one, you can't ask people for money, even though it's hard to do, even if you could. You can't ask them for money. Number two, it's not like you can say, well, I'm adamantly for this issue or adamantly against this issue, because you've got to be careful because you're going to be on the bench. So a part of what it takes to win for judge is what this guy is. He's a nice guy. He works hard. And his mom and dad are great. <laughs> So when, uh, when the opportunity came up to see if I could you know, visit down here, I said, absolutely. I've got a lot of friends here in, in John and, and, uh, and many here at Steve Reeve, who you mentioned. And I said, absolutely. I look forward to coming back um, down here. I'm, I'm down here a fair, a fair bit. And if, in fact, you tell uh, Gary Graham over at O'Fallon, if I'm down here much more, I'm going to have to pay, start paying property taxes. I can't do that. <laughs> He'll He'll pay send you a bill. No, it's not Don't do that. And, uh, I'm <laughs> So here, I, I, uh, <clears throat> when I look at the appellate court, and I look at our Supreme, 
we need to have a good appellate court justice to help bolster our justice on the Supreme Court right here. I mean, um, Steve yeah. works it hard. And the other thing that it isn't just me and you who are involved in politics and know him, but when his peers at the Illinois State Bar Association rank him, I mean, supremely qualified. So it's like you've got your peer group coming out and also embracing the fact that he would be a good member back on the, on the court. So I really do wish you well. And I intend to be where I can to help on that. <clears throat> Elections have consequences. And what we're about to do at the close at 7 p.m. on November 6th will be electing this gentleman to the bench, electing this gentleman to be the chairman of the county board here. And, <laughs> and the next leader of the free world. I had the chance to get to know Mitt and Ann Romney <clears throat> about five or six years ago. Uh, in fact, um, Steve, you and I were with the gentleman that introduced me to him, Denny Hasser, uh, during the spring session. Denny called me up and said, Dan, do you know Mitt Romney? And I said, well, I know of. We've shaken hands, but I don't know him. He said, you really got to get to know this guy because I think the two of you will click. And this was, like I said, about five or six years ago. I flew to Boston uh, at the uh, suggestion of the speaker, and I met with Governor Romney. Now, some of you may not know, but I am a retired executive from the private sector. I completed 25 years as a vice president of the <coughs> Service Master Corporation. Mm -hmm. When I uh, <clears throat> took the oath of office in January, I retired in December. And we bought, when I was there, we bought companies like Terminex, you may have heard of our pest control mm -hmm. company. Uh, we mm -hmm. bought a lawn care company called True Green. Mm -hmm. yeah. We bought a maid service company called Mary Maids. Mm -hmm. So we became a multi-billion dollar company. And I, my job was to help expand our portfolio to new markets around the globe, Honduras, Chile, Singapore, Hong Kong. So I'm a real life, a real life business guy who had the pleasure to serve as an elected official. So I'm sitting there with Mitt Romney, and it was just phenomenal. Here was a guy that I just had a click with. Business guy, all right, he made more money than I did, I get, I get all that. Um, but you know, business guy, and he served in public office. Asked me to chair his campaign. Absolutely, Governor, be honored to do it. We went through 2008, and he recessed his committee and supported John McCain. Senator McCain went on. My former colleague in the Illinois State Senate went on to become the President of the United States. I was together with Mitt and Ann Romney uh, a couple months after the inauguration, and I told Mitt that, I said, you know what? I think it's probably the best thing that you didn't win that primary. In 2008, think about this where we were. In 2008, I'm not sure anybody could have beat Barack because of his personality post, unfortunately, the accusations, but the post Bush administration, you know, where we were in America, hope and change, all that stuff. He was charismatic and all that. So Mitt Romney went out and worked awfully hard. He helped and worked for a lot of candidates, including me. Governor Romney came in and did a fundraiser for me when I ran for treasurer of the state of Illinois. We get through election night 2010. And remember, we hadn't elected a Republican here in Illinois on a statewide stage in years. Everybody in this state mm -hmm. was a Democrat from Chicago on the yeah. constitutional officer level. <clears throat> It was election night, 2010, and my staff came up to me with my cell phone, and they says, Mitt Romney. I said, Governor, he says, well, I heard you won that thing. I said, I sure did. Thank you very much. <laughs> and he um, said, well, I wish you well. And I said, after my swearing in, let's talk about 2012. Uh, a number of months later, he called me up and said, Dan, would you chair my campaign in the state of Illinois? I said, absolutely. And there it started. We went out, we worked hard. And I say this with total respect. Our primary of 12... 2012, we had great candidates. I, I respect Senator Santorum, mm -hmm. Michelle Bach, Herman Cain, mm -hmm. Ron Paul, Rick Perry, Newt Gingrich, anybody that's willing to step up, and you know what I'm talking about, 
Yeah. And you know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> Step up and run for public office, but what we don't have to deal with is the hot series spotlight of a national campaign. So all those people, I respect them for doing it, but we went to Tampa this year, we nominated unanimously, Mitt Romney to be our nominee, and Paul Ryan. How about that Paul Ryan for vice president? Mm -hmm. That was a good one. <laughs> <clears throat> and I think there are two <clears throat> tipping points in this campaign that occurred to truly believe that we can get to the 270. You know what 270 is? Yeah. That's the Electoral College. Yeah. I think two tipping points to date have been, number one, the nomination of Paul Ryan as the Vice President, and number two was that first debate. You got oh, it. Yeah. Was oh, that yeah. masterful? Yes. First <laughs> debate. <clears throat> so now we're watching this thing come down to the last... What are we at, Steve? 19 days, 18 I days? Not to count. Whatever, coming down, <laughs> coming down to the end. And I was with Governor Romney. I met him at the airport at O'Hare. That's probably about three or four weeks ago now. And I used to say I would go pick him up. Well, I don't do that anymore. Secret Service does, and I just ride along. Um, <laughs> went out there to, to, to be with him for our, our ride to the first event. And we talked about Illinois. And what our mission in Illinois is, he's got the nomination. He, we got our electoral, our, our um, delegate votes. But how do we go, what do we do? And we talked about it. And the two most important things that I am doing as the chairman of Mitt Romney's campaign is, number one, I am going in the field to help support good quality Republican candidates for the judiciary, for county board and <clears throat> county offices. Now, I'm all about state legislature and Congress. I'm all about it. I'm for Jason Plummer. I'm for Rodney Davis. I'm helping there. I'm doing fundraisers for him. I'm doing all that. But the level that we're working at is in the judiciary and the <clears throat> county level and the President of the United States. Because between there and there, we've got ourselves the legislature and the Congress. I will tell you, I honestly believe that there is a rustling under the leaves this fall with the electorate in Illinois. Yes, sir. Oh, There's something going on under those leaves that we're just not seeing in the polls and pundits yet. And I'm going to give you two examples of what I mean. <clears throat> One, we have victory centers in the state of Illinois. Which you know, okay, you know what some of, the, some of you know what those are. <clears throat> they are call centers put together in cooperation with the Republican National Committee, the Republican Congressional Campaign Committee, the Romney Campaign, the State Party, House Republicans, Senate Republicans. Wow. And the purpose is to generate voter ID to identify plus Romneys. The first phone call we make in that calling center is who's your presidential preference? And then we go through a whole series of other questions. We have gone over 3 million voter contacts in this state as Republican volunteer call centers in Barack Obama's home state. So when we had the opening of the Victory Center, I was a special guest to be there to kind of crank up the energy. Downtown city of Chicago. Wow. Barack Obama's city, right? Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, there are more Republican votes that come out of the city of Chicago than any other city in the entire state of Illinois. Wow. So we cannot give up, and we need to bolster and build that city for Republican, <coughs> for Republican state. I would never have won to be with you tonight as the incumbent had I not done well in the city of Chicago. So I'm the special guest, downtown city of Chicago call center. There were so many people that showed up that day, we didn't have enough room in the building. Yay. Mm. Chicago, Chicago, downtown Yay. city Chicago. We had no phones available for volunteers to use because every one of them were used. We said, could you come back in about an hour because Mary's going to have to leave, but in the meantime, can you go out and do this and hand out bills, bill board, or, um, brochures and stuff? Downtown city Chicago, packed! Wow. Mm -hmm. There's something rustling under leaves in this state. Oh, I hope so. The second story I want to tell you about, and Steve and I were there, was in um, a southern county, I won't name the county, you'll know where it is, a uh, deep southern Illinois county, it is abundantly blue, uh, they called me up and said, Dan, can you come down to be a speaker at this event, we had no Republicans on, the state, on that stage. I said, well, 
it was a Saturday. I'd been on the road for two weeks. I finally had a Saturday free that I was going to spend time with the family, do a cookout, pay bills, and do laundry. <laughs> so I mean, that's what you do when you finally got a day off in two weeks. And um, but they told me what it was. I said okay. So I had a friend. I I couldn't I couldn't drive. I just didn't have the time. So a friend loaned me a plane. We came down here. It was the coal rally. Old King Coal rally. You know which one I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> there were three thousand coal miners there. Some of them United Mine Worker, but many coal miners, retirees and families. 3,000 people in this county that had rarely seen a Republican. Steve and I walked in, we were like white deer in the forest. Yeah. yeah. And the first speaker got up and talked about the elections, Cindy, and how important it is and so forth. And was talking, and during that speech, from about me to you, two of the gentlemen guys <clears throat> were ready to fist a cup, getting in a fight. And the local police officers came over and said, okay, guys, and separate them. And then the moderator got up there and said, and now we'd like to bring up the state treasurer of Illinois. I'm thinking, thanks a lot, buddy. <laughs> Just about had a fight, now I get up to speak. Mm -hmm. And I got there and I was very candid. I said, elections have consequences. Just like I told you at the beginning of my remarks. Elections have consequences. And I pointed to a little girl right down there in front, and I said, this presidential election will have a dramatic consequence on this little girl's future husband. It has already has a consequence on her father, and it will have a consequence on her sister. Whoever the next president of the United States will have a dramatic impact on the future of coal and coal in Illinois. Now the 3,000 miners and family members started to hush down a little bit, because I wasn't being bombastic. I was being in a conversational, informative way, I thought. And they started to listen. And that's why I said that, um, you know, fossil fuel, and kind of went through that. And then I, then I, I actually told a white lie. I said, I assume most of you here are Democrats. Well, the white lie was I knew every one of them were Democrats. <laughs> and that's what I said that when you go in there, and I understand if you want to, and I refer to one of the uh, elected officials on the stage. I said, I know you went to school with, and if you needed to want to vote for him, it's different. You went to school with a guy. I get that, but when you go in there and you close that curtain, <clears throat> you can actually vote for Mitt Romney for President of the United States, and you won't melt. They kind of get a, <laughs> they kind of got a little chuckle, kind of ha ha. Yeah. Now here, here's the here's the other part. The second story, this part of the story. That's when I said something's rustling under the leaves. I then said the sentence. That I really wasn't sure of my reaction, but I figured, what the heck? I paid my gas money to get down here, and Kurt was behind me to whisk me out in case they threw tomatoes. <laughs> I said, I just want to tell you that I am the chairman of the state of Illinois for Mitt Romney for President of the United States. 3,000 mine workers, families, and retirees, when I said that sentence, gave me a cheering ovation. Wow. wow. Oh, oh. That's a lot okay. of Russell. Oh. Think about that. So you got this urban city, downtown, you can't find enough phones for Republican activists to campaign and call for Mitt Romney and a ticket, mm -hmm. and you got yourself a deep, dark blue county down here with mine workers that are cheering Mitt Romney. Mm. Something's rustling so. under oh, the leaves. Right. So, if we do all that we can and should be doing right here in this county and our friends in Madison and, and, and neighboring and the like, we're going to be able to make a difference. We're going to have Steve at the appellate court. And we're going to have John as the chairman of this board. Mm -hmm. And we well could have him around as president of the United States. <laughs> Let me um, thank you very much for coming out here. Really appreciate you coming out here tonight. It means a lot. Keep the faith. It will be abundantly hard to be the sitting president in his home state. I admit it. But we're not giving up an inch in the state of Illinois. That's appreciate right. you being out here. Thanks so much. Very good. Uh, you know, Dan, Dan can tell you, you know, the three years, and we've been through good years and bad years, 
there have been years where, as Republican leaders, people made a point to come to us and say, I, I'm not voting Republican again, or I'm, I'm not a Republican anymore. This year, every day somebody comes to me and says, I'm a lifelong Democrat. I'm not voting Democrat anymore. I'm voting Republican. I have yet to have anybody in the 17,000 square miles that I cover. I've yet to have anybody come to me and say, I'm a Republican, but I'm going to vote for Obama this year, or I'm going to vote no, for Obama. Oh. So one last story. Um, whatever food's left, eat. I was out every night for two weeks. It was my one night to come home and eat. And I thought, I, I had a night off. I don't know what it was. Something, something changed at the last second, and we couldn't schedule something in, in, uh, in its place. So I called. I said, Marianne, I get to stay home tonight. Oh, great, I'll make dinner. Huh? Come home, I sit down. What's for dinner? Toasted ravioli and cheese balls. <laughs> so I just thought I'd warm up all the stuff we got from the other fundraising event. So eat up, or I'll have to eat it. Thanks for coming. I appreciate it.